I've been noticing a lot of overwhelm coming from my phone lately. I'm sure many of you can probably relate to this, such as, you know, checking email, checking social media and text throughout the day. And then every notification, it feels, um, it feels urgent, creating kind of this constant pressure to respond immediately. And it's not just a distraction. It's a source of stress and anxiety that, that tends to build up over time. So this is not a healthy place to be. In fact, even during those, um, well, supposed rest times in the evening, I still find myself overstimulated, whether it's, you know, looking at my phone, you know, working on my laptop, watching something on TV, my, my brain, it just, it's always occupied. It's always thinking, and I'm not really giving myself a, a chance to just sit and relax with my thoughts and to truly unwind. So let me know if that's something that you can relate to as well, because this cycle just of constant connectivity and stimulation, it prevents us from really experiencing genuine rest and recovery. I mean, think about this. When was when was really the last time that you just sat quietly without, you know, reaching for your phone or turning to a screen? We've conditioned ourselves to fill every moment of silence with some form of digital input and this uh, this overstimulation. It can lead to burnout, decreased productivity, decision fatigue, and I would say a, a sense of perpetual exhaustion. It's like running on a treadmill that never stops. And when that happens, you're eventually bound to trip and fall. So if any of this sounds familiar, you're going to want to pay attention because in this video, we're going to discuss the, the small but powerful tweaks that you can make to your daily routine. Now, I've got five boss building tips for you, and these adjustments will really help you to become more productive when it's uh, time to work and allow you to fully rest when it's time to unwind. Because you know, let's face it, those two things, they go hand in hand and you cannot fully show up and be present in your work if you're not taking the time to really recharge properly during your downtime. And here's the thing, if you're new to my channel, I'm Gary Smith. I'm a U.S. Army veteran. I'm a business and marketing adjunct professor. And like you, I'm an entrepreneur. So first, let's talk about the freedom that comes from setting boundaries with your devices. Now, one effective strategy, and, and there's several, right? But one effective strategy is to really designate specific times of the day to check your emails and social media. And by limiting these activities to certain periods, you reduce the constant interruptions that really disrupt your focus. Another tip is to create a tech-free zone in your home, right? Especially in places that are meant for relaxation, like, like maybe your bedroom. And this helps create a, a physical separation, you know, between you and your work and your rest. Now, another critical aspect is developing a bedtime routine. Now that signals to your brain that it's time to wind down. And this could include activities uh, like reading a book. This is what I typically do, but you can also practice, you know, mindfulness, meditation, taking a hot shower, whatever works for you. Now, the goal here is to reduce screen time, at least I would say an hour before bed, because it's that, um, that blue light that gets emitted by our screens that interferes with your body's natural sleep cycle. It, it makes it harder to fall asleep, which affects the real quality of your rest. Now, physical exercise also plays a vital role in managing overwhelm and overstimulation and regular physical activity helps reduce stress levels. It really improves your mood, um, boosts energy. So whether it's a morning jog or an evening workout session, or maybe it's just a walk in your neighborhood, Incorporating some movement into your daily routine can have profound impacts and effects on your mental clarity and overall well being. Because the goal here is to really work towards mental clarity, you know, to, uh, to not constantly feel like you're running on a low battery or juggling a million different things. But by implementing these strategies, you'll find a, a better balance. And that enables you to achieve more during your hours when I would say you truly want to relax when it's time to rest. So, Let's dive in and start transforming the way that you approach both work and rest for a more focused and fulfilling life. Now, let's talk about making big changes by starting small. Now, imagine waking up in the morning and before you even open your eyes, your brain's already flooded with a daunting to-do list. You feel overwhelmed, unsure where to start. And the weight of it all makes you want to stay in bed. We've all seen those memes where um, someone's to-do list, it's, uh, it's so long, right, that they just decide to take a nap instead. It's funny because it's true. Our brains sometimes just tend to shut down at the, the sheer thought of everything we need to do. But remember, every journey, no matter how long, it begins with one small step. So the first tip is to really start with something small, especially on those overwhelming days. Maybe it's a Monday for you. Um, rather than letting yourself get paralyzed by the enormity of your tasks. So pick a one small manageable action. And now that could be something as simple as, as maybe just opening your blinds or 
making the bed. Now, these small actions, they might seem insignificant at first, but they create a sense of accomplishment, right? So this, um, this sets a tone, I would say a, a positive tone for the day. And when you complete a small task, first thing in the morning, you start to build that momentum, right? And this makes it easier to tackle those bigger tasks that are sure to come later on. And when you start small, you're not just tricking your brain into productivity, you're actually building a habit of taking action. Now, this is the same thing that they drilled into us years ago when I was in the military. And if you've ever been on the athletic field or part of a sports team, you know that those small victories, those lead to much bigger wins over time. For example, if your goal is to get fit, you know, start with a five minute workout. If you want to write a book, commit to just writing a paragraph. These are small steps, right? And they're, they're less intimidating. They're more achievable. And it allows you to gradually build up um, to more significant changes without feeling overwhelmed. Now, the key here is going to be consistency. And by integrating small steps into your daily routine, you create a foundation for sustained progress. It's, um, it's not about making massive changes overnight. It's about making small incremental improvements that add up over time. In fact, this approach, it, um, it not only makes your goals more attainable, but I would say it, uh, it also transforms your mindset. You begin to see the challenges as a series of manageable steps rather than insurmountable obstacles. So the next time that you're faced with a, you know, a long to-do list, remember to start small. Each step, no matter how tiny, it brings you closer to your goals and it sets you on a path for success. Now, let's talk about creating kind of that, that balanced routine. In fact, if you work from home like I do, there can be that temptation to, you know, grab your laptop first thing in the morning, dive straight into work. And I've been there. I've been there myself, editing a YouTube video that needs to go out that day, preparing a, a consultative package for a new client, or maybe preparing for a Zoom meeting, right? It's that urge to just jump right in without wasting time on breakfast or, or the usual morning routine. But this is not the better alternative for your physical and mental well-being long-term. Ideally, it shouldn't be all or nothing, right? You, you can't always be completely sucked into your work, into your business to the point where you neglect your health, nor can you spend all day just scrolling on your phone, playing in a hammock, right? Unable to start any task at all, right? You've got to find that healthy balance. And as entrepreneurs and business owners, this is critical. Now, from my own experience, I've learned to, um, I would say the importance of incorporating moments of peace into my day. Now, what I mean by that are, you know, simple routines like uh, having having coffee in the mornings, doing some inspirational reading early in the morning before I take my son to school and also before the, the whirlwind of that workday begins. And I would say that's um, that's why you hear advice a lot about not checking your phone first thing in the morning, because when you do that, you're immediately slammed with negative news. You, you, you get bombarded with events and messages, forces you to hit the ground running and you miss out on those quiet moments to really collect yourself and prepare mentally for the day ahead. So to create, I would say, a balanced routine, right? Start by establishing those clear boundaries between work and personal time. You know, try to designate specific hours for work and then stick to it. And I realize this can be challenging, but this helps uh, prevent the tendency to work around the clock. It also ensures you have time for your family, for your health, for your relaxation. Um, also consider incorporating breaks throughout your day to really just kind of step away from your screen, maybe stretch and recharge. These are essential for maintaining productivity and mental clarity. And I also recommend prioritizing activities that promote your well-being. Now, here's, here's what I mean by that, right? Exercise, going to the ballpark, spending time with loved ones, or engaging in hobbies that bring you joy and inspiration because these activities, well, they'll help you recharge. They'll keep you grounded. And remember, the idea is to succeed, right? In both your personal and your professional life. And this is impacted by creating and maintaining sustainable routines. It's, it's not about perfection, but it's about finding a rhythm, right? That allows you to be productive while you're also enjoying your life. It's a, a balance and you wanna to try to find that sweet spot. Now let's dive into the second tip, which I have for you, which is the importance of taking breaks because you might be thinking like, I initially did that taking breaks is counterintuitive to being more productive, but you know, that's not actually uh, the case. It's not actually accurate. So chances are you're already getting distracted throughout the day, such as, you know, checking your phone when you shouldn't be. So to minimize these distractions and, and I would say improve your mood, improve your focus, you need to allocate specific times to take breaks. 
Now, if you're, you're anything at all like me, you might have uh, maybe brought a cram mentality from the military or from college into your business. And that means that, you know, you're trying to fit a ton of work into a short period of time by forcing yourself to just kind of ignore distractions and focus um, intensely on one thing. But here's the rub, right? You're not as productive when you don't allow your brain to take a breather. This is especially true if you're doing any kind of creative work. But when you give yourself the opportunity to, to just kind of step away from a project, something amazing happens, right? So you go outside for a little bit, get some sunshine, you know, enjoy a snack, or maybe like me, you have a big St. Bernard that you can, you know, take for a short walk. So these, uh, these breaks, they're not just time off. They're vital for maintaining your focus and your creativity because then you return to your project and you feel more refreshed and you're ready to just kind of dive right back into it and get going with this renewed energy. And here's the thing, the core issue with this cram mentality is a mistaken belief that hours of distracted work without proper breaks are better than shorter periods of truly focused work um, with breaks. But the problem is that that's a flawed theory, right? Our brains are not designed to focus nonstop for hours on end. We need to have intervals of rest to process information and to stay sharp. So by taking these regular breaks, you're actually enhancing your productivity and the quality of your work. Um, usually your happiness as well. So think of it like this. Just as athletes need rest to perform at their best, your minds also need to take a break if you want to perform at the, the top of your mental game. So rather than just pushing yourself to work without interruption, I'm encouraging you to really embrace the power of what I like to call strategic pauses. Now, what I mean by that is to incorporate breaks into your routine deliberately by choice. So maybe set a timer if that helps and make sure to step away from your desk or your office. Remember the goal is not to work harder. Um, hard work is good, but you wanna work smarter. I mean, washing machines work hard. That's not what we're trying to be. So give yourself permission to pause and watch how this transforms your productivity. That said, the third tip that I wanna share with you is to use a phone timer, right? I do this routinely and I found that using a timer on my phone to really streamline work sessions creates an extra layer of resistance. It just kind of helps you fight that urge to you know, check your social media or, or something else um, when you should be working. So it's a tool that really helps you stay on track and minimize distractions. Now, if you want an example for this, I'll, I'll share with you kind of what I do. Um, I typically work 60 to 90 minute sessions with a, a 10 minute break between each session. So you might wanna adjust that time a little bit to whatever works best for you. You may not wanna do 90 minutes at a time, but I found that you know using a timer helps me be more intentional with my breaks. Um, I maintain my productivity, my creativity without getting burned out. Then after I create maybe two or three of these um, 60 to 90 minute sessions, I'll take a half hour break because I find that this method, it not only helps me keep focused, but it also provides a structure and a rhythm to my day. And again, you might want to adjust the time periods to better fit your schedule or your specific business by implementing, I would say these strategies. Um, you're not only setting yourself up for more productive work sessions, but also creating a, a more creative and a controlled environment. The key is to be intentional when you plan this out. So um, give these tips a try and watch how they transform your productivity and your overall sense of well-being. It made a, I would say, a big difference in my business, and I think you'll see results as well. Now, the fourth tip that I have for you is to really get your blood flowing, right? Um, move your body from time to time. And you don't need a gym membership. You don't need a trainer to do that. In fact, what I recommend, um, especially if exercise is something that's uh, new to you or Maybe it's not. Maybe it's something that, that you drifted away from um, over time. If that's the case, start small, right? Think about uh, easily manageable ways to get your body moving. This could be something as, as simple as taking a daily walk outside or, you know, buying a $10 jump rope or just doing some push-ups. So this doesn't have to be complicated. Don't make it difficult, especially at the beginning when the goal is just to start to develop these consistent habits. Because here's the thing these small changes can significantly improve your mental clarity, especially if, uh, like me, you, you sit for a lot of the work that you do because it's it's not just about physical well-being and mobility. Um, those are important, but it's also that moving your body, it helps to clear your head, right? It helps to declutter your mind and de-stress. And when I come back, you know, after, after I go and I lift and I, I build a home gym so I don't have to drive anywhere, but I always feel more centered. I feel more focused. And, you know, there's something about kind of getting that blood flowing that resets your brain. It, it boosts your energy levels. And you know what else? You're, you're releasing those endorphins. And I think a lot of creativity and, and positive mindset come from that as well. 
So just find some ways to incorporate movement into your day that's uh, both doable and enjoyable. Even small regular bouts of movement can have a profound impact on your overall well-being and your productivity because all you need is just a simple, effective way to kind of break up those long periods of uh, sitting to really reduce stress, to keep your mind sharp. So give it a try. Let me know your results and see how these small incremental steps can really lead to big changes in your life and to your business. Now, the fifth tip is to plan ahead, but not in the way that you might be thinking. Sure, you, uh, you probably want to have a, a physical or digital planner, which is what I currently use. But more specifically, I'm referring to how you prepare your space, right? The, the physical things that you need to be successful each day. And what I mean by that is if you know that you want to hit the gym in the morning, right? Take a few minutes the night before to get prepared, right? Go and get your gym bag, get your workout clothes, your, uh, your water bottle, right? Your weight belt to get everything that you're going to need, right? And put that somewhere that that says maybe by the door, you can easily grab it on the way out. Just this little bit of extra effort serves to eliminate the morning scramble and it, it makes it so much easier to hit the ground running without any friction. And when it comes to preparing your workspace, right? This is especially true, by the way, if you work from home like I do, because it has its own set of challenges, doesn't it, right? You, um, you don't encounter those same things when you leave and maybe you go downtown, you go to an office, um, it's different. So make sure that your desk is clean and organized with all your supplies, your, your pens, your paper, your laptop charger, ready to go. Now, this creates an inviting and efficient environment that makes you excited, right, to start your day. I mean, think about it. When your space is prepared, right, everything is in its place. It's laid out. What happens? You build momentum, right? You, uh, you, you're able to just get started. It sets a positive tone. It makes it easier to dive right into tasks because there's no clutter. There's no chaos to distract you. For example, if your, your home, your office, your studio, maybe your car is a mess, right? You'll likely dread stepping into those spaces and a, the thought of having to clean up and organize before you even get started working, and that is demotivating. But when you know that everything is in order, everything's organized, what happens? Your mood, your productivity, they soar, right? You're able to focus on what truly matters, your work, without the additional stress of having to prepare your environment each time before you even get started. So putting in the time to prepare your space the night before, this can make a significant difference in how you approach your day. You know, it's, um, it's all about setting yourself up for success from the moment that you wake up. And when your surroundings are organized, they're ready to go, you feel more motivated, you feel more productive. And it's a simple, yet it's a really powerful way that helps you start your day on the right foot and just maintain that momentum. So take a few extra minutes, right? Plan ahead and watch how this improves your daily routine and your overall effectiveness. And if you wanna learn more about how to launch, grow and thrive during those first few years of your business, just click or swipe the screen to watch this next video.